This journey moves on relentlessly. At one border post in Slovenia today, a new arrival every second. The government of this tiny country fears it'll be swamped, so they're rolling out the razor wire along their frontiers. As trains pull into Dobova station, the passengers sense Western Europe might not give them the welcome they'd hoped for. Instructions are barked through a megaphone. Police monitor the procession behind face masks to protect them from germs. Sweden and Germany, the countries most of these people seem destined for, changed the rules this week. Not everyone's getting in, so this may all have been for nothing. Masoud has travelled from Iran. You know that people from Syria will have priority. There's a good chance they won't let you stay. What are you uh, going to do I, then? I heard that and that's why we are thinking about Netherlands and Sweden maybe. But we are just hoping they let us stay there because we have no place to live. Everyone has their own reason for being here. Many, like Ahmad, say they're fleeing persecution. He's in a mixed marriage. A jailable offence, he says, in Afghanistan. She is a Shia, in sect, and I'm Sunni. This is the difference. It's forbidden to marry. Yeah. And so if they send you home, huh? you have to go to prison. What do you say to the, the German authorities if they say no, you have to go back to Afghanistan? I don't know. In the transit camps, there's respite, food, and first aid for those who need it. But as they're herded through these places, most just want to keep moving. We need fast, we need fast, fast to Germany, to Germany. In front of them, anxious authorities worried at what's heading up the line. There are tens of thousands already on their way from Greece here, maybe six, seven, eight thousand per day. Can you cope with that? We'll know when they come. Until Europe works out a way of handling this, there are no certainties. But for many, it seems the dream is dying before it's even begun. Martin Geisler, News at 10, Dobova, Slovenia.